Hi everyone, my name is Shauna, in case you don't know, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the movie In the Heart of the Sea. I recently watched this movie and I have some thoughts and I thought that it would make an interesting video to sort of like unpack everything about this movie because I've had to sort of just like sift through my thoughts on it and like process my emotions from it because it's based on a true story, yet it's so heartbreaking and hard to watch at times. I honestly watched In the Heart of the Sea because I saw that it was leaving HBO Max and it had Chris Hemsworth in it. Now, I probably would have watched this movie for the other actors too because after I started watching the movie, I was like, wait a second, this is such a fantastic cast. Why did I watch it for Chris Hemsworth, an actor who I generally appreciate, but I'm not super obsessed with him. Like I'm more obsessed with some of the other actors in the film, but you know, my brain is like, I recognize one actor, let's watch it. Before I get into what this movie is about or any other specifics, let's talk about the other actors in this film. So the actor who played Alistair Mad-Eye Moody from the Harry Potter series is in the film and he isn't on the ship because it's clearly on a ship. It's called In the Heart of the Sea. The movie has like one time period and then a time period in the past. So he's like in the time period in the like more future. It's not like our present day time. It's still way in the past, but he's in the less past version. And his performance was phenomenal because he didn't actually have that many like action scenes. He was just reciting dialogue, but like the pure emotion that you see on his face was fantastic. He did such a great job. There's Frank Dillon in here, although I feel like I'm saying his last name wrong. Like D-I-L-L-O-N. Anyways, he was Tom Riddle in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. He was also in Fear of the Walking Dead, which I still want to finish Fear of the Walking Dead someday, but I got so scared from that first season that I couldn't finish it. I do want to finish it at some point though, but there is two Harry Potter actors in here now, as you can see. And then of course there's Chris Hemsworth, as I've already said, from the Marvel movies, from like everything. He's such a well-known actor. And then Tom Holland is also in there, another Marvel actor who was incredible. Oh, and speaking of Harry Potter actors, there's one more in there that I almost forgot. Hermione Granger's mom is in this movie as well. So as you can see, there is a really, really incredible cast. And those aren't even all of the famous people in there. Those are like the famous people that I'm super familiar with. But if you look at the cast list, you recognize that there's names on there from other movies that are really popular. In the Heart of the Sea is based on a true story and it's the like inspiration for Moby Dick, which I think is also called the whale sometimes. Now Moby Dick, that story has never particularly interested me because I don't know, it just doesn't seem that interesting. However, I was able to get really, really invested in the story and I think I have a greater appreciation for Moby Dick now, now that I know the real story that it's based off of. So this story follows a group of whalers. So in this time, they were using a lot of whale blubber and oil to do things like fuel lamps. And so they would have these people go on these ships and go out whaling. And this was like before they had any sort of technology. So it was very risky to do. And it's following this expedition who are going to go whaling and there's two people that are butting heads and one person is the captain in charge but he isn't really in charge in terms of experience he just basically has a rich family with a well-known name so that's why he's captain and then there's chris hemsworth character and he is like the experienced veteran of whaling and he is like trying to take charge because he knows what to do so they're like butting heads and they hear about this place where there's tons of whales and this group decides to go to this place even though they've been warned not to go there because they just want to get the trip over with and they want to get lots of whale oil back and so they decide to go to this area and in that area they get met by a sperm whale who is gigantic and who basically destroys their ship and they're stranded in these little rowboats and they're trying to survive and get back to civilization. So it's a really interesting survival story because it's taking place in the water. I was very conflicted about which side of this whole survival scenario I was reading for because when they were showing in detail what they were doing to the whales, I was like, go whale, you attack those guys, go get them because the way that they were killing the whales was absolutely like gruesome and I was really disgusted by it. However, by the end I was like, oh, I sort of feel bad for these guys who were stranded on this boat and a lot of them died and it was very tragic, but I was like, I don't know which side I liked best in terms of whales versus humans because they both deserve to live, I guess. I don't know, I was very conflicted on how I felt about it. All of the actors did an incredible job. I think it was a really hard film to do. I believe that I was reading somewhere that Chris Hemsworth really dieted for the role, which makes sense because, I mean, they're starving, they're on a boat, they don't have anything to eat. There is cannibalism in there, which I wasn't expecting. I want a survival story that's really good, that doesn't have 
cannibalism or eating raw animals like monkeys. Like, I don't know, maybe I just haven't searched far enough to find a good survival movie because I really like survival movies. I just get really grossed out by some elements of it. I think the cinematography of the film was done really well because it was very visually stunning to watch, both in the scenes below where you're seeing the whales and the scenes where you're just seeing the beautiful ocean. It was done really well and I'm sure they didn't film in the ocean. My cat is here. My cats watch movies with me at night, so they heard me talking about a movie that they watched with me. I'll have my cat make an appearance by the end of this, don't worry. One of the things that really stuck out to me about this film is the fact that they didn't just basically have the end of the survival story and just end it right there. With these two different timelines, you get to see how this survival adventure impacted one of the people involved in it and how it really like ate away at him because yes, he survived, it was a big feat to survive, but he also did some terrible things to survive and you get to see this character really grappling with that. I thought that was really interesting. It was hard to watch parts of the movie knowing that this was a real story. So these things actually happened to these people because it's so heartbreaking and traumatizing what these men went through. The makeup artist did a great job and I don't know how much CGI was involved in the transformation from what they looked like at the start to what they looked like at the end, but it was done fantastic. I do have a little mixed feelings about the fact that some of these actors dieted to have that physical transformation because I'm not necessarily the hugest fan of that. I wish more CGI would have been used, but you know, you get what you get and all of the actors are alive and fine right now as far as I'm aware. So it's not like they had long lasting impacts on it, but that's the thing about survival movies. It's like, I like to watch them. I like the transformation that the characters make, but I don't like dieting that goes into it because that can be dangerous and not very fun. Overall, I'd say that this movie is one that's definitely worth the watch, but it is not for someone who's faint of heart because it gets very intense and dark and it is graphic in some parts. Even if you don't like Moby Dick, I'd recommend watching this movie because it's more of a survival story to me than a Moby Dick type retelling of story because it's a real story that Moby Dick was based off of. So Moby Dick changed little bits of this true story in order to make it into the final Moby Dick version that it was in the end. I would say that if you like the movie Jungle, then you'd like this movie or vice versa. If you like In the Heart of the Sea, then you'll like The Jungle. They're both really good survival stories that have some elements that were very similar to each other. And that's really all I have to say about this film. It was heartbreaking yet incredible and beautiful and I do highly recommend it. My cat just looked at a bird and it caused her to knock over my phone so I think that's my signal that it's time to wrap this video up. If you like this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me. If you haven't already I really need to go because my cat keeps knocking over my phone. There I'm holding on to her so she can't knock it over again. Apparently there's just some really exciting birds outside. I upload videos twice a week, so my next video will be uploaded next Tuesday, and that'll be a book-related video. I hope all of you stick around to watch that video. I really gotta let her down so she can go play with those birds. Talk to all of you later. Bye.